Good afternoon, science classes. Welcome once again to our discussion of the planets of our solar system. And this will be the only thing that we're doing for Wednesday. We will not have any uh, worksheets to work on. If I email you that you're missing worksheets from Monday or Tuesday, we're going to use Wednesday as a catch-up day to get that work caught up. So the only thing we're doing today is taking notes and following along in the book, and then that's it. So I'd like for you to open up your science books to page 122, and I'd like for you to open up and uh, download and have in front of you 102 of your notes on Lesson 3, The Outer Planets. Let's look at our vocabulary for Lesson 3. In Lesson 3, we just uh, simply have uh, one vocabulary word that we will need to know, and it's called the Galilean moons. We'll talk about that here a little bit later on. So today we're going to be talking about the gas giants, the outer planets, also known as the gas giants. And so let's take our first note on the gas giants. We find these answers on page 123 of our science book. Write that down. Detail three ways in which the outer planets are similar. Number one, they are composed of hydrogen and helium. So write that down, hydrogen and helium, and you can copy it right from my screen here on this slide. Hydrogen and helium. The outer planets are extremely massive. So your second note, the gravitational force is very strong. Just write down very strong for number two. And then the third note is the structure. The structure of the outer planets the interior of the outer planets are mainly liquid, and the gas giants have gas and liquid layers around a small solid core. So write down thick gas and liquid layers covering a small solid core. Give you a few seconds to get that copied. So let's review for a moment then what the gas giants look like like in comparison to planet Earth. Here you can see Earth in this image and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune in relationship to planet Earth. So they are very, very large planets, as you can tell. We will look at how they are all similar here uh, very soon. So let's start off with Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest of the planets in the solar system. If you look on page 122 of your science book, you see a beautiful image of the planet Jupiter and the clouds of Jupiter, especially the Great Red Spot, uh, which is a famous hurricane that's been on planet Jupiter for over 400 years. So let's talk about Jupiter. Jupiter has a diameter 11 times larger than Earth. So at the bottom of your notes on 102, uh, I found this on page 124, so if you'll flip in your book to page 124, you can see some more information about Jupiter. And the first um, circle facts about Jupiter is in the lower left-hand corner on size. Write down that it is 11, just put the number 11, 11 times the diameter of planet Earth. We'll start in the lower left-hand corner, about the uh, 7 o'clock position, if that's a if that's a clock. So 11 times bigger than Earth. Let's move up to the 9 o'clock position, that circle, and talk about the mass of Jupiter. Jupiter is 318 times Earth mass. So 318 Earth masses, or more than two times the mass of all the other planets combined. So it's more massive than all the other planets combined. Let's talk about the core of Jupiter, and uh, Jupiter's core is solid and made of rock, that's your first word, and iron. Rock and iron. Overall composition of Jupiter, we can see that Jupiter is 80% uh, hydrogen, 80% hydrogen, and 20% helium. Hydrogen and helium, the same substances that we have in our sun. The atmosphere of Jupiter 
is 1,000 kilometers thick. So we'll write the number 1,000 at the right-hand uh, position there, the 3 o'clock position, 1,000 kilometers thick, contains several layers of clouds, and the average temperature at the top of these cloud layers is about negative 150 degrees Celsius. And then, for a period of revolution, you can put down 11.9 years. So for one year on Jupiter, you have to be 11.9 years old on planet Earth. So some of you are one year old on Jupiter. Rotation. For rotation, put 9.9 .9 hours. 9.9 .9 hours. So Jupiter spins very quickly. As, as large as it is, it spins faster than planet Earth. Ours is 24 hours. Jupiter is 9.9, .9, almost 10 hours to make one rotational spin. Now, number of moons, you can write that toward the bottom. That is inaccurate uh, information. There's more than 63 uh, moons here. So what I'm going to do here is go to our website on solarsystem.nasa.gov, and let's talk about the moons of Jupiter. And you can see that Jupiter has 79 moons in the Jupiter system. Let's move on to page uh, 103 of our notes, and we're going to talk about the four most important moons of the Jupiter system. They are entitled the Galilean moons. These four moons of Io, that's number one under notes, Europa, that's number two, Ganymede, that's number three, and Callisto, which is number four, are called the Galilean moons because they were discovered around the year 1610 by Galileo Galilei. I'd like for us to look at Io. Io is one of the most active of all the moons in the Jupiter system. If you look at this image, you can see that Io is covered in volcanoes. These black spots and red spots are lava flows uh, because Io is so close to Jupiter that the gravitational forces of Jupiter are forcing the insides of Io to come out. So this is what Io looks like up close, one of the most volcanically active uh, moons in the entire solar system. Let's look quickly at the second one here called Europa. Europa is an ice-covered moon. You can see very large cracks in Europa. Uh, it is perhaps the most promising place to look for present-day environments suitable for life. Uh, we think, uh, scientists think, that the ocean is of salty water uh, but beneath this icy shell. So this is the moon called Europa. The third Galilean moon of Jupiter that I'd like for you to know is called Ganymede. Ganymede is a... Um, Another icy moon, and you can see some craters and some ice on this moon. This image was taken by the Galileo spacecraft. And then the last Galilean moon is called Callisto. Callisto. And Callisto is among the most heavily cratered objects that orbits the sun. It's thought to be a long dead world with hardly any geological activity on its surface. So, a lot of craters. Here you can see Callisto with Jupiter in the background. So that is the four famous Galilean moons uh, that we have um, that you need to know about. I don't ask that you know all the moons of, of Jupiter, but those are very important in the history of science because it changed the perspective of what Jupiter was like. Relate Jupiter's moons to the formation of the planet's rings. And the answer for that, this is on page 125 of your book. And so to answer that question, you would say the collisions between Jupiter's moons and meteorites likely resulted in the formation of the planet's rings. So the collision between Jupiter's moons and meteorites formed a thin ring around Jupiter. This is found again on page 125 of 
our science book. So Jupiter is the king. Uh, Jupiter is named after the, the Roman god of the kings, uh, and uh, he is the largest uh, planet in our solar system. Let's move on now to the next note there on 103 of your notes, and that is um, the planet Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. It rotates very rapidly and has horizontal bands. You can see that it is uh, very massive, and 95 Earth masses. The diameter is 9.4 times the Earth's diameter. And its average distance is 9.6 AUs. Period of rotation is 10.6 hours. Uh, so it spins very quickly also. And its revolution time is 29.7 years, which is um, almost 30 years for it to go around the sun. It has more than 60 moons. Uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second. So let's do a compare and contrast at the bottom of 103 of your notes. Let's talk about how Saturn and Jupiter are different. Let's go down the Saturn column first. Let's talk about the ring system. The ring system on Saturn is uh, very large, as you can see in this image, very large, 72,000 kilometers wide, and very complex, large and complex. For diameter, write that number down that you see on the screen, 9.4 Earth diameter, 9.4 times the Earth diameter. Average distance from the sun, 9.6 AUs, as I said, and the appearance of the atmosphere, you see these beautiful colored bands. Saturn's atmosphere is made also of hydrogen and helium, and it's about 1,000 kilometers thick. Let's compare that to Jupiter now. On the right-hand side, the ring system of Jupiter is very faint. So write the word faint, F-A-I-N-T, faint. The diameter of Jupiter is 11.2 times Earth diameter, 11.2. The average distance from the sun for Jupiter is 5.2 astronomical units. And then for appearance of the atmosphere, you have the colorful bands and the great red spot. Colorful bands and the great red spot. So let's uh, visit Saturn and its many moons by going once again to solarsystem.nasa.gov and let's first of all look at the beautiful planet Saturn. So Saturn is famous for its ring system. Here you can see the beautiful rings of Saturn and the, the bands of Saturn. Now for moons, how many moons does Saturn have? It has 82 known moons. 53 of these moons are confirmed and named. Another 29 are waiting confirmation of discovery and there's one moon I'd like for you to know in this in this uh, Saturn system, and it's this one right here called Titan. Titan is the only moon that we have ever landed a robot on other than our own moon. It is bigger than Earth's moon and even larger than the planet Mercury. Titan is the only moon in our solar system that has clouds and a dense atmosphere and the only world apart from Earth with liquids on its surface. So there is a liquid, liquid methane on the surface of Titan. Titan is the biggest moon. The word Titan means very large, um, uh, very large uh, god or Titan means very big. So there is the moon Titan, very, very large moon in the Saturn system. So let's go back to our notes. And here we can see um, that Saturn's rings are made of particles of ice. These particles range in size from small dust size specks to ch chunks as large as a house. Winds in the atmosphere of, Titan, uh, of Saturn have a speed as fast as 1,400 kilometers per hour. So Saturn is a very hostile planet, not some place that we'd like to go visit. Again, it's made up of hydrogen and helium thick layer of uh, uh, liquid hydrogen and a solid core. It has seven bands of rings, each contain thousands of narrower ringlets. The ice particles in the rings are possibly from a moon 
that was shattered in a collision with another icy object. So Saturn, the beautiful planet. All right, let's uh, again look at some of these. A comparison of the moons of Saturn, we know that it has more than 60 moons. Titan is the only moon with a dense atmosphere. Here you can see some other moons, Tetelis, Dion, Rhea, Titan, and then a moon called Aedipus. So some very significant moons in the uh, system of Saturn. All right, let's move on to our last page of notes, which is page 104, and we're going to study the last two gas giants, Uranus and Neptune. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun with a system of narrow dark rings and a diameter about four times that of Earth. All right, so on the top of the page, you're going to write this down. I found this on page 126 of our science book, and there are three bullets for Uranus that I'd like for you to write in the left-hand side. The first bullet is about how many moons that Titan has. It's right here, 27 moons in the Titan system. 27 moons in the Titan system. Or, I'm sorry, in the Uranus system. I keep saying Titan. 27 moons in the Uranus system. The second bullet is axis of rotation is tilted on its side. Uranus rotation axis is so tilted that Uranus seems to roll along its orbit. Some scientists think that Uranus at one time was hit by another large planet and knocked it over on its side. So the second note, axis of rotation is tilted on its side. And then the third bullet point for Uranus is how far it is from the sun. 19.2 AUs from the sun. 19.2 AUs from the sun. Let's continue to talk about Uranus. It is very cold in the Uranus system. The temperature at the cloud tops is negative 215 degrees Celsius. This image shows Uranus with its rings and some of its moons. You can see how it is tilted over on its side. Uranus has a deep atmosphere composed mostly of hydrogen, helium, and a small amount of methane gas. Beneath Uranus's atmosphere is a thick, slushy layer of water, ammonia, and other materials. Uranus has a tilted axis or rotation that may have been caused by collision with a planet the size of planet Earth. Uranus has at least 27 moons, as we mentioned before. Let's go on to the world called Neptune. And there's three bullet points about Neptune I'd like for you to write down. The first one is how many moons it has, right here. 13 moons, 13 moons, write that down. The second bullet point is its distance from the sun, 30 times, 30.1 times the distance of the sun than Earth is, 30 times further away. And then, the last bullet point that I would like for you to write down is its largest moon is called Triton. Triton. We have the large moon Titan at Saturn. Uranus and uh, Neptune has a very large moon called Triton. Triton is 80% as large as Earth's moon. Triton's surface is the coldest place in the solar system that we know of at negative 235 degrees Celsius. Very cold. So the third bullet, large moon called Triton. Now what do both of these uh, gas giants have in common? So the first bullet is they're both outer planets. I think that one's done for you. The second bullet is they're both gas giants, right? Gas giants down. Both of these on the third bullet have a diameter four times that of Earth. Four times that of Earth. Both have a faint ring system. That is your fourth bullet. Faint ring system. Both have an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. 
That is your fifth bullet. Your sixth bullet both have a rock and iron core. Rock and iron core. And last bullet is they both were explored by Voyager 2. Voyager 2 explored both planets, Uranus and Neptune. It is the only robot to explore these two worlds. Here you can see a dark spot that was spotted by Voyager 2 in the year 1989. This is a gigantic hurricane. Five years later, this storm was gone. Uh, the Hubble Space Telescope took an image and could not find this great dark spot. So unlike Jupiter uh, and the great red spot, this dark spot did disappear. Let's move on down our notes on 104 to the next section. Identify the four characteristics common to all the outer planets. Um, this is found on one, uh, 127, 127 of our book. Number one, they all have rings. So write the word rings down. Number two, they're all mostly made of hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen and helium. Number three, they are both very large. All four of these are very large. And number four, all four of the gas giants have many moons. Have many moons. All right, that brings us to our very last note on page 104. And here it is. Connect it. Hydrogen, helium, and methane are gases on Earth. Why are these substances liquids on the gas giants? It's a very simple answer. Just write this down. Hydrogen, helium, and methane are liquids because the gas giants are very, very cold. Anytime you take a gas and you make it cold, it will turn into a liquid. So as we continue looking at these worlds, we know that Neptune's interior is also like Uranus's. It's made partially of frozen water and ammonia with a rock and iron core. Neptune has at least 13 moons and a faint dark ring system. And all of the outer planets are primarily made of materials that are gases on Earth, but they are liquid on these worlds. That concludes our lesson for today. Again, there are, is no homework um, for you to do, no worksheets. Uh, we just covered three pages of notes and that's all I want you to do for Wednesday. I do want you to get caught up on your Monday and Tuesday work if that is not done. Hang in there guys, we will be seeing you soon. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Take care, we'll see you next time.